Well, we're back working on the railroad. We are. You know, we never stop working on the railroad. No, various projects. But we went off to Promontory, and we're going to a car show, and we're, we're out and about again. Thank goodness. Oh, my gosh. This 14 months of lockdown. But that doesn't mean we're going to stop working on the railroad. Oh, no. This is fun. This is really fun. So we've finished the structures and the lights. Right. And... Um, I guess the next step is to really lock down the mud and the dirt and the track ballast and uh, then press on to the scenery and stuff. Which, yes, that's really a good idea. <laughs> but here's what it looks like right now, and there's a tremendous amount of extruded foam exposed. I know, it looks like we're starting over again, but we're not. We're not. <laughs> But this week, our plan is to make sure you don't see any of that foam anymore by covering it with this. Track ballast and dirt, and, and, and we're using real dirt. This is squirrel dirt. Yes, we call it squirrel dirt. <laughs> squirrel, we got this from Echo Canyon, and any excuse to get out of town, we're going to go back up to Echo Canyon and ask the squirrels for some more dirt. <laughs> right, because boy, are they excavating a lot of dirt at that rest stop. Boy, do they excavate, and it makes great scenic stuff and mostly what we're using it for is track ballast but it's such a fine powder right uh in a previous video we talked about mixing it with yellow dextrin yes which is an ingredient in yellow glue and it's just kind of a cornstarch and it's got anyway you can buy it online and i found a supplier of yellow dextrin there's a video and i'll put a link in the description but when you're working with this really fine dirt like this if you spritz it with water, it just goes everywhere. Right. So if you mix it first with some of this fine yellow powder, this yellow dextrin, uh, you can go through and you can get it really dialed in here, make it look exactly the way you want. And then if you put a fine mist of water across here, as soon as that moisture hits this stuff, it just turns to a sticky mess. Oh. Uh, kind of like syrup <laughs> <laughs> or a kid that's been playing in the sandbox <laughs> that too that too um but normally you spray water and all this stuff washes off and it just goes everywhere and i've had so much trouble when we were doing the road crossing and that's when i hit on using this glue ingredient yellow dextrin and you mix that in with your really fine dirts and ballast for your very first coating i mean once you've got a coating down it tends to stay put but as soon as I hit this with a spritz of a very fine mist of water, it'll activate that glue and it just, and then you just have to remember not to touch it. Right. Because it's sticky at that point and it'll Ooh. stick to everything. You don't and, want it on the track then. Well, you got to get it off the rail and everything and, and you can come back and clean it up. But once I spritz this with some water, which I'm about to do, it just immediately attaches itself and becomes this sticky mess and then you just very very conscientiously let it sit okay and um and we're doing that here too uh, you can see that i've mixed in squirrel chunks yes <laughs> as long as those chunks aren't from the squirrel no, no we, we sometimes <laughs> those will pop up and we we, Ooh, yeah. we sift those out of there yeah get rid but of that as soon as the moisture hits this it immediately adheres to itself and starts adhering to the to the scenery and everything and so it doesn't just wash away which is its great tendency right and then when i come back and i add some more chunks or some more ballast or some more cinders or something else it's going to stay put well that's neat because it's got this underlying uh coating of of this stuff already in place but I've run into a problem where when you hit it with water, it all just washes right off. But you mix it with dextrin and, uh, and then you can add chunks. So here I'm adding just, when I sift it, I sift it into different, you know, grades. Chunky and, and yeah, creamy. <laughs> very fine and chunky and, and rocks and it all kind of separates out. So I'm adding some bigger chunks here. And this is before I've added the water. And because the dextrin is down there, it will attach all this stuff. And I think you could probably just leave it like that. Okay. Let it dry and leave it like that. But I also come back then and apply some dilute white glue over the top of this whole thing. And then other, other coats too. Right. Cinders and grass and weeds and stuff like that. But for the base coat, um, fine dirt and yellow dextrin 
and then spritz it with some water and then just let it sit. Right. Don't touch it. No. Or, or it'll all be stuck to you instead uh, of the road bed. Been there. <laughs> Because it wants to stick to absolutely everything. Well, and I always want to touch it just to see if it's setting oh, out. Don't do that. <laughs> my my great temptation is I see a spot and I go, ooh, this should be more over this way. And I'll try to shove it more over that way. And it's stuck to my paintbrush. It's stuck to my finger. It's mm -hmm. stuck to whatever I'm trying to use. No, you got to get it in place and then spritz it and then let it sit. Yes. And then you can, if, it, if it's really completely messed up, you can knock it all loose and try again. But just make sure that it's exactly the way you want it, spritz it, and there it is. Oh, that looks really cool. Yeah. Now, in this area right here, this is kind of in front of the water tank. Uh, and in the area down around the water tank, um, I want it to look muddy. Yes, of course. And actually, when we get grass and moss and everything on here, it's going to really be a muddy mess. <laughs> yeah, moist. Now, down at the engine shop, I want to apply cinders. Yes. And that's what we're using over on the Colorado in the on the Colorado main line in the engine shop and even in the switching yard. So just just a little bit of cinders here. Right, don't overdo. You know, I don't want it to look too industrial over here, but locomotives are filthy things. Oh, they always leave a cinder or two and, someplace. And so I want to make sure there's just a light bit of cinders and then as we get close to the locomotive shed down at the end here. I'm going to switch this over to 100% cinders. Ooh. Well, not 100% because it's going to have sawdust. Yes, it's going to have a few little sawdust. These are wood burning engines. That's right. So they spill a lot of chunks of wood and sawdust mm -hmm. and bark and stuff. But initially, it's just going to be cinders. A little bit of cinders mixed down in there with the dirt. It gives it a, a filthier quality. Which is what I have seen in times past. Yes. And then I don't, I'm not using dextrin here because you can see it just stays put. Oh, no kidding. So I can just lightly douse this down with either alcohol or slightly soapy water and then come back with a dilute white glue and, uh, and that'll adhere everything in place. But I like the look. I do too. That looks really neat. It looks actually very real. Yeah, and over under the water tank mm -hmm. over there, uh, that's looking really good. And then to secure the cinders and, and any chunks that have been added on, once it's spritzed down with water, this is, uh, this is that cheap white glue, the stuff they call school glue. Yes. It's crap glue. Don't ever buy Don't it. Don't use that. Yeah. It's... But, I, but I was about to throw a bottle of it out. Uh -huh. And I thought, I'll bet that would dilute and work okay for... Tr sure. It works better. Yeah, well, it's funny what you find out just about the time you're ready to put something in the garbage can. It suddenly goes, oh, hey, hey what if there's a use for this. That. And actually, it turns out that that crappy school glue dilutes easier, um, it mixes easier, and it makes a better track ballast. Uh, the cheaper and more generic the brand, the better. This well, is... it's meant to wash out of clothes. If you've ever dealt with elementary age kids, <laughs> you want it to be able to wash out of clothes and hair and you name it. Yeah, and as an elementary school teacher, you know that. Ouch, yeah. But uh, I just found that when you're just doing this kind of scenery work, this works better. Right. It Because it dilutes, it mixes so easy. Right. And it works really well. And this is probably about four parts water to one part cheap, crappy school glue from Walmart. There you go. The generic brand, not even the Elmer's version of it. Oh, the, yeah, the, the white label. <laughs> the white label one. <laughs> Remember the generic food that just had a white label? And then I, I helped set it in place with just um, a little tiny bit of slightly soapy water here from my mister uh, to help it suck down into all the little crevices and cracks and stuff. And that will do it. And once this sets up, it will be really set up. And because it's that crappy school glue, if you do have to knock it loose, you can spritz it with water and yeah, it softens. And that way it goes, that's right. Yeah, water so soluble. I've, I've fallen in love with cheap, crappy school <laughs> glue. <laughs> Me too, but for another reason. <laughs> for other reasons. <laughs> Now that lighter color granular stuff, that's kitty litter. Which works wonderfully. We're using that as ballast outside, but I'm finding it stands out a little too much here inside. So I'm going to just stain this with uh, Watco furniture oil. That works. Because the kitty litter sucks it right oh, up. Oh, every color of the rainbow it does. And you can change the color of that kitty litter. Now this is cinders. 
Oh, From yay. the Roundhouse at Evanston. That's right. They're special cinders. And, uh, well, it's someplace you can go and just get locomotive cinders. Right. Thousands of pounds <laughs> if yeah, you want. Yeah, the whole area. <laughs> so we're using lots of it on the railroad. But down here at the engine shop, I'm just dumping cinders all over everything. And then I thought to add sawdust. This actually didn't work out very well. Oh, really? But where they're wood-burning engines, I thought I would, because I've been saving my sawdust from the table saw and so on, and I, I, it's a little too, a little too white, a little too tan. A it's little, just, it ugh. doesn't make sense, is what it doesn't do. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and here again, I, I mix dextrin in with the cinders, because they want to go all over the place, uh -huh. and just turn into something, the consistency of ink. And after I got it all kind of mixed, the sawdust mixed in with the cinders and everything, it's okay, but it isn't the look I was after. Not entirely, no. But it's a layering process, and I thought, you know, I can add some more cinders, and I'm going to get some chunkier sawdust. And by the time I did that, it actually looked great. Right. First things first, um, let's activate the, uh, the dextrin, the yellow dextrin in here by just spritzing it with some fine soapy water. I've tried spritzing it with alcohol Ooh. and that does activate the dextrin. Does it? Yeah, and you can see that there's a little bit of foam coming through, but this is just the first coat. Right. And I'm going to apply some more cinders and then like I say, I decided to come back with some actual shredded bark and some heavier stuff. Exactly. That's what you would find. That would. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I, actually, by the time I got this all dialed in, it looks pretty darn good. Yeah. But I was a little disappointed with the very first coat no. here. I, that really fine sawdust didn't give no. me the look that I was hoping for. Not exactly. And then, of course, I came back and applied dilute white school glue. I'm glad you mentioned that because it looks like pollution to it me. It does look like Well, it, it can be an interesting look, but it uh, dries out and it vanishes. Right, we want that to go away. Which is what you actually want. And down here by the entrance to the actual locomotive shop, no sawdust, just cinders. And then, of course, when you're working around uh, your points, you want to make sure you're not gluing your switch points. Oh, that would be bad. But when I was a kid, I discovered that you don't ballast points or you no. ruin the whole thing. But I love the look of just the cinders. Yes. With the white glue holding it in place. And mm -hmm. like I say, dextrin mixed in with the cinders so that it doesn't just all slide right off the layout when you apply the wet soapy water or your alcohol. And boy, that looks nice. I like the look of that. And then once it sets up, um, and in this case, the, the sawdust, it doesn't look as bad as it did before it, it, it looks, was glued yeah, in place. Yeah, it looks pretty good that way. But what I've done here is I've started, I just, I just took a saw and started sawing tree branches because I wanted shredded bark. And this is that wood that you put together right. for uh, locomotive loads Yes. for the wood burning engines. And you put a lot of work into that. <laughs> yes. But I cut out a whole bunch more, not because we needed more wood. You'd made plenty of it. I just needed the sawdust. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just using some sticks from the yard here and a Zona saw, yeah. but I was very careful to preserve this more ragged, gnarly As sawdust. As you would find where there's wood piles, yes. And this is much closer to the look that I was after. Uh, this actually starts to look a little bit like some area where somebody's been cutting up firewood. Oh boy, and I remember that from having a wood-burning stove. Oh, and me as a Boy Scout, and that yes. was our fundraiser every year, is, is make you firewood for end people. And all kinds of chunky things. And not for their locomotives. Anyway, that particular sawdust, once you get that sprinkled on there, that's a much more, I think, appropriate looking sawdust. Yes for the, the area around the engine shop. And then I stacked up a whole bunch of this wood that they've that they've put together to put in the locomotives. There you go. And that looks pretty good. It looks authentic. And then I wanna put a more wood load on the backdrop because just beyond the wood pile there is the backdrop. And that's way too small of a wood pile. So uh, I think I will enlist you. To paint wood. To paint wood. <laughs> yeah, try to just duplicate the look of that wood pile right there. After all, you built most of the wood in the wood pile. Yeah. Um, but just paint that on the backdrop so it looks like they've got many thousands of cords of wood. Well, anyway, back to the scenery part. So just down from the engine shop, we're applying more squirrel dirt and gopher dirt. 
Gopher dirt, yes. We've got the two different dirts. A gopher dirt comes from the golfers in Steve's yard. <laughs> <laughs> and the squirrel dirt comes from the squirrels that excavate tunnels in Echo Canyon. But the light, the darker stuff is from Steve's yard. And, and we just let the little varmints do the digging for us. Right. It's, it, you know, there's all these piles of already finely sifted dirt. But they're good at it. There's a, there's a few random bits of uh, poo, I, I, I not to put too fine a point on it, but... Uh, so you need to make sure you 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 know you, you get that out of you there. You sift everything. Yes. You sift everything and and maybe even stick it in the microwave for a minute. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> uh, anyway, gopher dirt and dextrin in this area, and again, we're just getting a first coating down. It sounds like a vitamin. Ooh. <laughs> Well, let's work in this area. This is the upper part of Bottleneck Creek. Right. And we did all of that testing and actually made the lower part of Bottleneck Creek. And we even uh, wrote an article about that. Which we is, did. It's coming out in the uh, Garden Railroad Annual. Oh, neat. Which will be hitting the markets here in just a couple of weeks. Oh, cool. Anyway, this is above the track, the other side of the track. And you made these great rocks. Out of that uh, foam stuff that you normally spray into cracks for insulation. Yeah, that crevice filling. Oh. Because again, we need lightweight materials yeah. up here. They make a good rock though. That makes a great looking rock. And then I'm using uh, sculpt mold Right. And I'm mixing acrylic paint with the sculpt mold to give it uh, a more or less proper color. Again, this is just a first pass on all of this right. stuff. So if it doesn't look exactly right, uh, each layer should bring it more and more around. And eventually this is gonna be a swamp. Yes. So these rocks are keeping the track from sinking into the swamp. And um, I wanted it to look like a, a retaining wall and then come in and add the natural rocks that would be here. Absolutely. So uh, I'm just shoving some of these little uh, rocks from the from Walmart, from the, just the pottery yeah. department. Yeah, just this, yeah. We bought a big like 10 pound bag of these little small rocks. Sure. And if you shove them into the wet sculpt mold, they pick up some of the color of the sculpt mold. And I even tried mixing some with the sculpt mold and that didn't work out very well. Just mix the sculpt mold, get it in place, and then while it's still wet, shove your rocks in there. And that works really well. And then spritz it with water to mm -hmm. wash some of the color back off, and there it is. Just like it would be in nature. Just like it would be in nature. And then I came back again, that was the first pass. The next pass is to add some more water washed rocks by just kind of putting those down where the water would have washed the color away making sure that you leave some of the muddy rocks up on the steep part. Exactly. Like a washed away bank, and I think that looks really great. And then down where the water's been flowing across it, make sure you're putting clean rocks. That would be in nature, yes. Yeah, so that it looks more like that. And then here's a, a bit of uh, golfer dirt mixed with dextrin to fill in around some of the water washed rocks. Um, because there would be mud right. on the bottom of the swamp. Oh, definitely. And eventually there will be a, a thin layer of water over the top of all this with cattails oh. and ferns and, and stuff. And ferns and all kinds of vegetation. <laughs> so right now we're just doing mud and ballast and rocks, uh, keeping in mind that we'll just keep adding over and over and over with these, these other scenery items as we go. Now one of the really fun things here is once you get this in place and then you spritz it with water or alcohol and then you come back with the dilute school glue, you can start to see what it's going to look like when it's a wet swamp. Right. You get this sense of, oh, this will look really neat because this looks, this already starts to look wet. And eventually we will be capitalizing on this by actually making it look wet. Right. But in the meantime, it's temporarily wet just because we've wetted the whole area down to apply the dilute glue. And it will give you all kinds of fun ideas on where the water should be pooling and where the rocks should be dry. And it just, it, it's, uh, it's a great inspiration. I, one problem is because it's a creek, the glue wanted to <laughs> flow downhill. Right. <laughs> so I'm using my little picker-upper here to suck the glue back up out of there and reapply it up at the top. But there's the finished look right there. Oh, cool. And uh, like I say, this is the, the first pass on all of this. But 
it's already looking pretty darn good. I like it. And then I came back and started dry brushing a bunch of the scenery. So working with some lighter colors, lighter tans and, and grays, coming back over the tops of all of the various rock castings, um, it, because the whole thing's starting to look just a little dark. Right, and we don't want that. Yeah, we want it to look like a bright, sunny place. And so I'm just very lightly dry brushing these lighter colors on top of the rock castings so that it's not quite such a dark environment. Right, but leaving the cracks dark so that it does give depth to us. So yeah. that is really a good idea. Yeah, it looks like dirt caught down in there. It but does. It also looks like shadows. Right, as it would be in nature. Yeah, so it gives it that really sunny, outdoorsy quality. Uh, the key is to keep your brush incredibly dry. Just a little tiny bit of paint on there. And then I even did that up here on the ballast in a few places. Uh, because it really looks like a, a dark, contaminated mess in places. And a lot of this area is all going to be grass and, and, and moss and stuff and ferns. Right, exactly. And we don't want it to look quite like the blasted Mojave Desert. <laughs> well, and the thing of it is, is the sun would kind of bleach out some of those stones that are exposed. So, yeah, they would yeah. be lighter. So just applying a little dry brushing in here and then again trying to envision what this is going to look like when most of this area is actually going to be grasses. Right. With just this dirt sort of poking up between the, the big clumps of grass. That should look neat. Yeah. Now in a few places I got carried away. Uh-oh. Did I get carried away sometimes? You sometimes do, yes. Yeah, so I, I'm coming back here with black acrylic paint. Uh, especially on the cinders because uh, I did some dry brushing here and I'm not happy with it and so I'm just working some I'm sort of dry brushing black over the top of the white which I normally wouldn't do I'd dry brush lighter colors over darker colors but I'm just trying to restore some of the darker nature of this I just got a little carried away right but that looks good too right now yeah so this is taking it back to looking much more like locomotive cinders but a little bit of that light color still coming through because in the real world everything is a mixture of, of everything that's right especially on a railroad yeah there's 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 sawdust there's leaves there's yeah. crap of all kinds and there's cinders right oh boy are there cinders Anyway, this is much more the look that I was after, and um, I think we now have dirt and mud and ballast pretty much dialed in. Looks like it. And we're ready to move on to grasses and greenery. And, Ooh, that'll be fun. And stuff like that. Because this, I think, is beginning to look... It's looking uh, a little bit like Mars. <laughs> yeah, it does. No, no vegetation at all. So now we will come in and, and bring life to this whole thing by adding grass and, and uh, trees and stuff like that. Exactly. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, please pop over to the channel and subscribe. And we've got a playlist on building this railroad, so you can watch that if you have any questions whatsoever. And in order to subscribe, you can do that with the blue button. That blue button. <laughs> right there. <laughs> right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you on Tuesday with a collectible thing. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.